Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, we're going we're going to uh, Vancouver. Y you know, hey Canada for a change. I've never been there, but I feel like I have. I can cross it off the bucket list, just like this guy with the really cool name of Rocky Rambo Way Nam Cam. Yeah, dude. Okay, we're jealous of your name, obviously. Just like he crossed off his bucket list, you know, maybe video games, reality. Say, yeah. Say when? See, he believed life was a video game. Unfortunately for everybody else, it was Mortal Kombat. Because he done Mortal Kombat it, um... You know, it's a whole thing. Let's give it a go. Two Marpole were headed, a lovely L neighborhood located right between Vancouver Airport and Vancouver proper. You fly in, it'll be the first place you see. It's an old area inhabited 4,000 years ago. Jeez, you think you'd be sick of the place, but no, people are still living there. 25,000 people 4,000 years later. It's a heavily residential area. The demographic is primarily Asian, and to quote, Vancouver is awesome promises to attract a younger, hipper demographic. So check it out. Cool dudes. Sounds bodacious. So in little old Marpole lived a little old couple. Diana Ma Jones and Richard Jones. Diana was a well-loved, well-respected occupational therapy consultant where she would attach uh, sausage balloons to people's necks. When she came, we tried a variety of the commercial collars of foam and wire, but they were just too rigid or didn't provide her with enough support. So in the middle of the night, it came to me that we should try air as a dynamic component. She had gone to school at the University of Alberta, Central Michigan University, before settling down in good old Vancouver. Mellow. You know your body best. You know what feels just right. Work it hard through the day. Don't lose it through the night. She worked first at Vancouver Coastal Health before becoming a consultant herself in 1999, inventing devices which helped the physically disabled. Her husband Richard, 68 years old, he, he was physically disabled himself. Diane and Richard, having been married for roughly 40 years in 2017. Diana was also a member of the Razzmatap, a dance troupe she'd been a member of since she moved to Vancouver 25 years previous. On the 27th of September 2017, a Wednesday, Diana failed to show up for work. She hadn't called in sick, she hadn't told anybody, you know, she wouldn't be in. So it was very unlike the 64-year-old Diana to just not turn up. She would let them know she wouldn't be in. She was like the, the big dog. And so, they started calling the house in Marpole. And the phone would continually ring out. It was a couple of hours into the start of the workday that a co-worker of Diana's, a fella named Anthony, decided he would go over and check on them to see if everything was alright. It wasn't. Like at all. When was the last time you were in touch with her? Oh, I would have seen her at work yesterday. Um, a lot of co-workers were surprised that she hadn't called in sick. She's not on vacation. It's very uncharacteristic of her. And the back door is open. I, 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 man, I think there's blood everywhere. I think I need someone to come over. I'm going to stay at the house, but I don't think I should go in. I don't know. I'm going to assume you need uh, police and ambulance, ma'am. Front door is locked, back door is open. Uh, there's a trail of blood coming, footsteps coming down the steps. And uh, for what it's worth, man, there's a knife in the front pathway. It's, it's in a plastic cover, right? But what kind of made me go around back is there is also a hatchet on the front yard with uh, like it looks like drops of blood. Not a subtle scene exactly, leaving a bloody hatchet out front and a bloody knife out in the back in plain view for anyone to see. He did eventually go into the house, and it was even worse. I peek inside, there looks like there's blood all over the floor, man. I hope I'm overreacting. I hope it's just, I don't know. 
There was a shit ton of blood, a metric shit ton. It was horrific. Both Diana Ma Jones and Richard Jones had been brutally murdered. This was, as you can imagine, an absolute shock to just ev everyone. You know, it's in that neighborhood, this nice old couple. Why would this happen? Officers are combing a full city block, searching for any evidence after a double murder discovered Wednesday inside this Marpole home. Police found the bodies of 65-year-old Diana Ma Jones and her husband, 68-year-old Richard Jones. We haven't been able to create a, to discover a clear motive in this event. Uh, we don't know if it's targeted. We don't know if it's a random act. Police went door to door just trying to find anything. They warned the public to be on the lookout. Stay frosty. As they... Well, it seemed, first of all, to be, maybe, a home invasion gone awry. And if it happened once, it could happen again. The day before, everything had seemed absolutely grand. Diana had her dance practice, did a bit of shopping, went back to her hubby, nothing untoward. You know, those who saw her said she was in grand form. Richard, much the same. He was buying a few tasty treats at the off-license, and was then back home himself. And it seemed that while they were both out, killer was in. Well, not exactly in, he was outside, but as the investigation began, it looked like it was when they came home that Tuesday night, what happened happened. This person somehow gained access to the house. Maybe the front door had been left unlocked, might have followed Diana into the house, where he slit her throat and then hacked and slashed at Richard, leaving more than 100 wounds on his body. It was obviously very bloody, and there was quite the struggle at the house. Drag marks. Bodies moved. They were both found in the shower. One thing that was found, and that was kind of weird, was that after the murders, the killer pff, kind of just milled about. He ate a peach, he had some bonia, that's milk, and then, uh, had a goo, really. Milled about, stole a few books, and then did a legger. Did a legger? in Diana's car, which he, he, well, he took it and drove. There's something about peaches and milk that's just... kinda gross. But see, that was the thing, not much was stolen. Just, like I said, just a few books and the car. The car would later be found about like 12 hours after the police discovered the scene. Jewelry remained, uh, laptops, TVs, you know, valuables you think would be stolen. That's when the, you know, a uh, home invasion, breaking and entering gone wrong, that kind of lost steam. Now it seemed worse than that. It's very rare. A double homicide in our city is rare. A homicide that's not connected to the criminal lifestyle, I would say, is even more rare, more rare. Residents are now being asked to call 911 if they see anything suspicious or if they have a gut feeling that something just isn't right. Whoever, whoever did this, they were no pro, let me tell you. As I said, they found Diana's car within a few hours, a couple of blocks from the house. It had been dumped. At the scene, they found DNA. They found it around the house and under Diana's fingernails. It didn't match Diana. It didn't match Richard or anyone else they already had in their system. Also, the hatchet they found in the garden. The hatchet that, well, the murder weapon. It still had its barcode on it, so they could trace when and where it had been purchased from. They traced a suspect quite quickly, and they saw him buy a hatchet, gloves, and a hat in early September. They also had footage of this guy dumping Diana's car. However, they had no idea who this guy was. They started staking out the Marpole area and Canadian Tire, where the hatchet and other items had been purchased from. It was at the end of October, so about a month after the murders, that an officer, you know, having the flyer of this guy, hooked up and eyeballed them. Recognized instantly. But they had to be sure they needed hard proof, like DNA, to see if it matched what was found under Diana's fingernails. They started following this guy and learned his name. Rocky Rambo Way Nam Cam. That's on his birth certificate. It's real, real name, yeah. No wonder he became a killer, his parents obviously hated him. As far as the police knew, he had no relationship with the Joneses. They were strangers. No criminal history, nothing was known about him. This guy's a ghost! Kinda literally. 
So he was suspect number one. They knew his name. They knew where he lived. That was it. Even following him was difficult. Because they had nowhere to follow him to. They shadowed him and they watched him for about uh, two weeks. During that two week span, he left his, his home three times. Just going down to the shops. Stayed inside like pretty much all the time. How they managed to get his DNA was like so. One of the times he did come out, a cop, undercover, went up to him and asked him for help opening a water bottle. He obliged. Kind so. He used his, like, uh, teeth to open the water bottle. I'm like, nah, it's, it's fine. You can keep it. And that was that. They had him. It matched the DNA on that water bottle from his teeth marks matched what they found at the house. He was arrested and charged with two counts of first degree murder in November 2017. So what do we know about Rocky Rambo Wei Nam Kam? Well, he was born in Hong Kong on the 2nd of August 1992. He moved to Calgary when he was a teen and studied economics at the University of Alberta. I mean, look at him. After all he did, is it any surprise he's a Patriots fan? So yeah, not really much is known about Rocky himself. Other than, by the way, what his roommate said. His roommate said he was a nice guy. Much like his roommate who did this when reporters showed up. Cam was arrested Monday at a rundown house on Granville Street. This man answered the door there this afternoon. Can you tell us anything about Rocky? Yeah, he was a nice guy and I guess he was up, but get off my property. Just As we were leaving, the man attacked us and another TV news crew. Oh, break those right now. Hey, don't do don't. anything. Hey, hey. 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 So 25 years old, has one older brother and one younger sister, not particularly close with either, they both also live in Canada. He had moved to Vancouver during the summer of 2017 to, quote, try his luck. Bummer, he wasn't having much luck. He was unemployed at the time, having trouble getting a job yo, though, how hard was he really trying? Because finding a job, finding a job, it's difficult and it was not his passion. Not at all, let me tell you. He owed his passion was video games. I want to play video games, but, well, that's not much of a choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have a lot of video games, Rocky. That's true. Specifically, Skyrim. Yeah, yeah. You're looking at the Dragonborn himself, but come on, I think at the end of the day, we all know who the real Dragonborn is. <laughs> this guy. Never should have come here. <laughs> Skyrim belongs to the Nords. Have a seat. I think Chris has just gone to get you some water. Okay. Um, so, like I explained to you, the conversation that was private, I'm still recording this. I'm going to switch this off in a minute when I'm done. This. Interview room is being audio and video recorded. Okay. Okay. Okay, and your full name, Rocky Rambo Way Nam Cam. Yes. Yeah, you're laughing. Why are you laughing? I don't like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you don't like all of the names or some of the names? Rocky Rambo. Do you know Rocky Rambo? Well, I, yeah, I know a Rocky Rambo, yeah. You don't like Rocky Rambo, do you? No, much, no. No. <laughs> is that the, the, but that's obviously the name that your parents gave you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kiss, I mean. Huh? Kiss. Kiss, I mean. Yeah. So, wow. Well. Oh, well, <laughs> you know. Well, but everyone could, you know, after they know my name, they, they could surely know me, <laughs> like Rocky Rambo. Who? Oh, that guy. <laughs> uh, when you meet people, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Rocky Rambo. Oh, General Rocky Rambo. Oh, sure. Yeah, that guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, there's not, uh, it's quite an unusual name. So, Rocky was brought into the interrogation room. I hope you like uh, mouth sounds. Uh, 
I really wish the interviewer hadn't brought him in a chicken sandwich. I just want you guys to know, the interview is about nine hours long. I had to listen to the entire thing. And he eats through quite a lot of it, or just makes general mouth so sounds. It, uh, I nearly lost my marbles. Just saying. The interview mainly consists of this. Here they are here. Do you recognize those folks? Uh, I have nothing to say. Yeah, go ahead. I have nothing to say. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have anything to say. Okay. I have nothing to say. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't want to talk about it. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. I don't want to talk about it. I, I totally respect your position. No, you, you, at this point, you don't want to talk about it. But you, you might change your mind, and I'm going to suggest you probably will. I don't think so. I have nothing to say. Nothing to say. <laughs> Come on, Rocky. That just can't be your response to this. Nothing to say? I have nothing to say. Right. Please don't laugh at this. It's just funny that I just keep saying I have nothing to say. Yeah, Rocky. Real funny. So funny, the interviewer eventually loses her patience and flips out. Look at that and say, ah, I'm good. I'm good. Don't worry about me. I know you got my DNA under her fingernails, but fuck her. Who gives a shit about her? Who gives a shit about this guy? I'm good. Like, how is that? Like, how are you doing that? How are you sitting there saying, no thanks? You know, Rocky, I can sit there and I can feel that you are feeling something. I can see that you're emotional. Why aren't you taking this chance to at least express remorse? Maybe today you're not ready to talk about the whole ugly story, but at least say you're sorry. For what? You're an animal. Rocky never confessed, broke, admitted, nothing. Um, I'm not sure if you understand the, the magnitude of, um, no, of ma the, the largeness. No, 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 no. You know that one, good. <laughs> I'm just waiting for your word. Magnitude yeah, you know, the magnitude of what's going to happen and what's going on. I mean, the murder is serious, right? Mm -hmm. Appreciate what you have to say, but I really have nothing to say. I got you on video doing those things, so I don't want you to sit there thinking, this is nothing. I don't have to worry about this. You have to worry about this, Rocky. It's not a laughing matter. Take some grass. Have a dinner. Oh. I'm going to sit with you. I think you need company. Mm, no, no thanks. <laughs> anyway, I could make this end. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's not going away. It's not going to end anytime. What was going through his head, quite frankly, your guess is as good as mine. We've got no information whatsoever to tie the victims to the accused. Police were not expecting this to, to be the guy. He's just a kid who really, really loves video games and comics and all that. Nothing bad in his history, nothing that would point to what was done. When it came to trial, Rocky's defense, essentially, it, um, it came down to this. I'm afraid your journey ends here, traveler. Is this real life? Why, yes. Yes, it is. He still thought he was uh, in Skyrim. Uh, there was no, there was no real motive, or at least he didn't know himself. He didn't know himself or know himself. He ramble Wayne Cam was soft-spoken. He appeared unemotional. His evidence a matter of fact. 
Cam's first language is Cantonese, but he chose to give his evidence in English. Cam told the court he was walking down the street September 26, 2017, when he saw Diana Ma Jones taking groceries out of her car. He said he pulled out his hatchet and a pocket knife while hiding behind a tree. I ran to the door. I believe she tried to close the door, but then I tried to bust my way in using force. As soon as Mr. Jones walk into kitchen, I stab him. I just keep stabbing him. It goes on for a while. Thought in my head, how come he didn't die? When he tried to stand up, I'm not sure if I stab him or push him to floor. Go to living room, pick up hatchet. I use hatchet and chopped him on the neck. Defense counsel Glenn Orris told the court Cam suffered from a mental disorder at the time of the killings. He thought he was in a video game and within the game, he attacked and killed the couple. Defense says Cam has no prior history of violence. It was the only defense manifested. The only one attempted because it, it just happened. There was nothing to point to, to why. No mental health issues, nothing like that. He didn't even steal much from the house even though he was broke. He just stayed at home, played video games, read comics, went out, killed a couple who lived roughly a mile from his house, and then went back, played more games, and read more comics. The defense argued for manslaughter, not murder, but murder is what he got. Two counts, first degree. He was sentenced to life in prison with no parole for 25 years. Now in this whole one, you get a lot, you'll get a lot of people blaming video games for what he did, but I mean, if it wasn't video games, it would have been something else. I want to play video games, but well, that's not much of a choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have a lot of video games, Rocky. That's true. Movies then, any form of entertainment really, they would have blamed the comic books he was reading. Video games, yeah, just tend to be an easy scapegoat. His favorite video game was Skyrim. Pretty tame, I would say, as video games go. But I guess he really did think, you know, he was the Dovahkiin and the Joneses were dragons. <laughs> Maybe even dastardly Alduin itself, who, as we all know, was the Dragonborn's sworn enemy. I mean, uh, Sky, what? Sorry, no idea. I play football, and I'm too cool to know about those things I just talked about. Rocky Rambo. Fucking nerd. Thank you so much for watching. I really uh, do appreciate you taking the time to be here with me. Sure here, go on. Uh, I'll see you as always real soon in the next one. Until then, please take care of yourselves. Bye, care.